Ice Barrage, here we come. I'm sure if you're doing this quest, you already know this, but Desert Treasure unlocks the Ancient Magic Spellbook. For levels, you must have level 53 Thieving, level 50 Magic, level 50 Firemaking. Also, sort of requirements are level 10 Slayer, which can be omitted if you have a gas mask from the Plague City quest, as you can use the gas mask instead of a Slayer face mask. The other sort of requirement is 50 Mining, but technically it's not required if you feel okay about defeating a level 167 enemy using only water spells. Up to you. You're also going to have a much easier time with this quest if you have at least level 43 prayer and combat stats in the 50s, since there are multiple enemies over level 100 that have to be defeated. I beat this with combat stats in mid to upper 50s fairly easily, so if you're somewhere in a similar range you shouldn't have too much trouble. You'll also need to have completed all of the quests pictured here. While it isn't technically a requirement, I'd recommend that Iron Man should complete Ghosts Ahoy for access to the Ectophile or the Fairy Tale quests for the Fairy Ring Network, since we need a way to get to Canifis a few times. Regular accounts should be fine since you can buy a Teletab to get there. If there are any quests that you need to complete, I've links to a couple guides in my description box. Okay, items. This is a long quest, so there's a bunch here. First two columns are just stuff you should have in your bank since this quest is broken into chunks, with quite a few times where you can stop and go bank. It's pretty straightforward, but here are a few notes on some of the items. Technically, all the stuff in the second column isn't required, since it's just stuff for teleports and battles, but it's going to be a lot easier if you have them. For ice gloves, as mentioned about the mining requirement to get these, if you're comfortable taking down a level 167 enemy who attacks with magic and melee by only using water spells on him, you don't need the ice gloves. If you've done Hero's Quest, you would have got a pair. If you don't have these, I'll quickly go over how to get them before starting the quest. Note that they do require level 50 mining to obtain and are annoying to get since you have to run through some dungeons and have to defeat a level 111 enemy. As noted on the levels screen, if you don't have the level 10 Slayer to wear the face mask, you're going to need the gas mask from the Plague City quest. A Slayer helmet also works. Lockpicks, I'd say get as many as you can to be on the safe side since it can require a couple dozen tries to pick the lock. As noted before, you'll need a way to get to Canifis in Mauritania. Salve Graveyard Teletabs are the fastest way, but the Ectophile or Fairy Ring Network also work. Note that you will only need three total Salve Graveyard Teleports, with two in your bank and one in your inventory, but thought I'd let you know you can buy them all at once. For potions, these are just estimates based on the number I used. Technically, they are all optional, but recommended. Of course, this will vary based on your own levels and combat skill, but hopefully you have these things all stashed in your bank anyway. In your inventory, we'll need a bunch of random stuff, but luckily most of it can be noted. I'd also recommend keeping a Ring of Dueling or Amulet of Glory on you at all times during the quest, since there are a lot of points where we have to go back and bank. The fastest way is using a dig site teleport, but since they can be kind of pricey, you'll be perfectly fine using a dig site pendant or just running an extra minute or two. I'm going to go over how to get the ice gloves quickly for anyone who wants them, but if you're ready to start the quest, you can skip this section. Okay, to get ice gloves, once again, you'll need level 50 mining as well as any pickaxe you can use. You will need combat gear to fight the level 111 Ice Queen. She's technically weakest to magic, but she's still pretty easy to beat with melee, and she attacks with crush, so bring appropriate armor. Also, you'll be attacked by enemies along the way, so protect from melee prayers and prayer potions will be helpful. There's a bunch of running to get to her, so grab some stamina or super energy potions to make it go a bit faster. Bring some sort of teleport out. Amulet of Glory or Ring of Dueling work great. And to get to White Wolf Mountain, you can use the Gnome Glider if you've unlocked them. Otherwise, a Camelot Teleport or Games Necklace work just fine. Use your teleport and make your way to the top of White Wolf Mountain. Once you reach the rock slide, right-click Mine Rock Slide on it, and you'll be able to move the rocks. Then take the southernmost ladder down to the dungeon. Run southwest down the passage. When you see a ladder, climb it. Once you're back on the surface, click on the other ladder just to the northeast and climb back down. Run north down the tunnel and follow it all the way around.
Okay, finally. There'll be another ladder. Climb up it. Then climb back down the ladder directly to the northeast. Now you'll be in the same section as the Ice Queen. Run north down the tunnel, ignore the Ice Warriors, and find the Queen. It's a multi-combat area, so if you can try and get her in a corner, that will help reduce the number of things attacking you. Once you defeat her, she'll drop the Ice Gloves. You can teleport out and actually start the quest. Alright, to start the quest. Technically, it starts down here at the Beedabin camp, but just use your Amulet of Glory to teleport to Al Karid or Dueling Ring to the Duel Arena to head to the Shantae Pass, since the fastest way there is taking the flying carpet. So head to the Shantae Pass and buy a pass from Shantae. And since there's a bank chest here, you can double check that you've got the proper starting inventory. Also, side note that I'm wearing the desert gear, but if you've got water skins, you'll be fine. There's less running around in the desert than I thought. Head through the Shantae Pass and to the Rug Merchant. You can right-click on him to travel and then select Beedabin Camp. Alrighty, flying on the carpet out to the Beedabin Camp. Conveniently, our quest start is right here. Nearby there will be a guy in brown called the Archaeologist. Go ahead and talk to him. Ask him, do you have any quests? And he'll ask you to take the artifact he found to the dig site and have them take a look at it. Say you'll help, and you've started the quest. He'll give you some etchings and says it needs to go to Terry Bolando. Okay, now we need to get to the exam center south of the dig site. Either use your dig site teleport, dig site necklace teleport, or your ring of dueling to duel arena teleport gets you decently close as well. Once you're there, go in and talk to the guy with the gray shirt and red pants who's labeled as archeological expert. Ask him about the desert treasure quest. You'll give him the etchings, and he struggles with the translation for a bit, but then says he needs a minute to write it down. Just click on him again. Yes, a desert treasure quest. He'll give you a book, and says take it back to the archaeologist at the Beedabin camp. So it's back to the Beedabin camp again. Make your way back to the Shantae Pass. Just like before, buy your Shantae Pass, go through the pass, and right-click the rug merchant to travel. Select Beedabin Camp again. Okay, travel on the rug again. And once you're back, talk to the archaeologist. You'll give him the translation, and when it prompts you, say, don't read book. He says he needs to read it, but just click on him again. He says that there's some sort of treasure hidden in the desert. A desert treasure, if you will. He starts negotiating with you and asks if you want to help him find the treasure. Select help him and he'll tell you to go investigate the bandit camp to the south. So run a bit south through the desert until you get to the bandit camp. Note that if you're wearing any gear that is associated with Saradamon or Zamorak, you should take it off or they might attack you. Once you're there, go into the large building to the west. Find the bartender and talk to him. And click Ask About Desert Treasure. He will refuse to say anything about the desert treasure unless you buy a drink. Talk to him again and select Buy a Drink. Is this the most expensive beer in RuneScape? Might be at 650 coins. Click Buy a Beer and then he'll stop talking again. Click on him again and this time he'll at least talk a little. When prompted, say, I heard about four diamonds. He'll mention the diamonds of Azanadra and tell you to go ask the village elders. Head out of the bar and go to the building to the east. Sometimes people like to train there. I guess it's because they automatically attack you so you can AFK train combat. Anyway, go in the building and talk to Iblis. At first he tells you to get lost, but when prompted, ask him about the four diamonds of Azanadra. He's actually pretty excited to talk about them, since they're artifacts that apparently were stolen by Zamorak followers a while back. And now the diamonds granted the thieves special powers, so they're going to be a tough fight apparently. He says to find the diamonds he's going to need some special ingredients for a spell. When prompted, respond yes to his question if you'll get the ingredients for him. 
He'll list all the things he needs, and what do you know, we happen to have those exact ingredients with us right now. When asked, say, yes, I'll go get those for you. Then you can start selecting the items from your inventory and using them on him. Be careful with the bones to right click to use them if you didn't note them so you don't accidentally bury them. Once you've given him all your items and talked to him, he should say, excellent, those are all the ingredients he needs. Otherwise, he'll mention what he's still missing. He says he's going to go set up the spell in the desert to the east, so we should meet him there. So it's out to the desert next. Head southeast out of the camp. You'll see a circle on the mini-map, and that's where we're heading for. When you get there, you'll see Iblis and all of his mirrors, or rather scrying glasses. Each mirror is supposed to show the general location of each diamond, but you don't actually need to bother looking at any of them, since we already know the locations, because they haven't changed since 2005. Alrighty, let's go find some diamonds. First on the agenda is the Blood Diamond, which we need to go to Canifis to learn more about. To get there, if you've got the Salve Graveyard Teletab in your inventory, just click that and run the rest of the way to Canifis. And if you don't, not to worry, use your Dueling Ring to Castle Wars or Amulet of Glory to Edgeville to get to a bank. And from there, grab a Salve Graveyard Teleport, Ectophile and some Energy Potions, or a Draymond Staff and your favorite way to access the Fairy Ring Network. And then use Fairy Ring CKS. Since Canopus has a bank, you don't need to worry about any other items at this point. Once in Canopus, enter the building to the south, and a short scene will play, with a vampire named Malak harassing the villagers. Pretty typical Mauritania stuff. Malak says he wants a word with you, so go over and talk to him. When asked, tell him you're looking for a special diamond. Malak says he can help you out, but we've got to do something for him. Although, he says he just wants the owner of the diamond killed, which we were going to do anyway. So it kind of just seems like a win on our part. So you can say yes to agree to the arrangement. Ask him, how can I kill Desso? I'm going to guess he's French. Yeah, probably French. That's the name of the blood diamond thief and talk through the answer. Make sure you get through his whole response or the next section won't work. Malak says that by using a special ritual, we can weaken Desso. We'll need a blessed silver pot, some blood, some spice, and some garlic. Next up, we've got to go make the blessed silver pot, so head to the bank and grab some supplies. Our next stop is Drainer Village, so get a charged amulet of glory, or a Lumbridge teleport and you can run. Your silver bar, maybe some energy potions, and a way back to Canifis. So salve graveyard teletab, or ectophile, or teleport near to a bank. We're also going to make a stop to Entrana, so make sure you don't have any armor or weapons, which includes the Draymond staff, so if you've been using the fairy ring network to get to Canifis, bring a teleport back to a bank with you instead. Jewelry like the Amulet of Glory and Dueling Ring are fine, as well as runes and teletabs. So make your way to Drainer Village with the Amulet of Glory teleport, or run from Lumbridge. From there, run a bit south and east to find a trapdoor in the ground. Open the trapdoor and climb down the ladder into the tunnel. Run north down the tunnel until you reach a weird little hideout with a weird little dude. Talk to Ruan Toon, a very normal guy, and he'll make your silver bar into a silver pot. If you've got a spare charge on your Amulet of Glory, teleport back up to Drainer Village, or just run back down the tunnel the way you came. From there, make your way to the second most northern dock in Port Serum. Note, if you do end up with some item that the monks won't allow to Entrana, there's a bank deposit right here you can use. Talk to one of the monks of Entrana and tell him you're ready to go. He'll search you and hopefully clear you to board the boat. Once there, click to cross the gangplank and then run to the church. Talk to the high priest and he will bless your pot. 
you should now have a blessed pot. And it's back to Canifis. So use your salve graveyard teletab, ectophile, or teleport to a bank to get your Draymond staff and make your way back to Canifis. Go to the bank and grab your pestle and mortar and garlic. Then use the pestle and mortar on the garlic to get some garlic powder. Then make sure you have your blessed pot, spice, and garlic powder and return to Malak. Talk to him and you'll ask him for some fresh blood and he'll stab you and grab some of your blood, damaging you five hit points. So add the garlic powder to the pot and then the spice. Then if you right click examine the pot, it should say a blessed silver pot filled with blood, garlic, and spices. That means it's correct and you're ready to fight Deso and it's time to gear up for a fight. One other thing to note, if the blessed silver pot doesn't have all the right ingredients, he will just respawn if you get him down to zero. So make sure the examine text is the same. Now, before we take him on, I'm gonna go over a few notes about how to get to him and the best ways to fight him. Deso is hiding in the graveyard over here, which can be kind of annoying to get to. There are three ways to get there. I'm going to go through all of them quickly since it may affect what you need to put in your inventory, but I'll go through the details after we gear up. The first way is to simply run through the swamp. Note that you'll be attacked by ghasts in the swamp that might rot a couple pieces of your food. If you've completed the nature spirit quest, you can go to the swamp and use your silver sickle to cast bloom and add the nature things to your druid pouch to protect you from the ghasts, but that's totally optional. Otherwise, just expect that you'll lose a few pieces of food to ghast attacks. The other rats also have gas, but they involve less time running through the swamp. The second way is the Shades of Morton shortcut, which involves the least amount of running through the swamp. If you've completed the Shades of Morton quest, you can use the minigame teleport and pay 10 coins to take the Swamp Bodhi shortcut through the swamp to get you pretty close. So you just have to remember to save an inventory slot for your 10 coins. The third way is the In Search of the Myrkey shortcut. If you've done the In Search of the Myrkey quest, you can use the tunnel entrance to the south of Canifis to get you closer to the entrance. Okay, so hopefully you know which route is for you, so let's go over the preparation for the fight. Couple of things to note on this guy. Deso is weakest to magic, range, and stab, and is immune to poison and venom. Also, if you die or leave for any reason, you'll need to refill the silver pot. He has two attacks, a rapid melee that can hit up to 19, and a combo ranged magic attack that hits twice for 5 damage each for a total of 10 damage. He'll switch between these to counter whatever protection prayer you're using. If you try and hit him from a distance, he'll teleport next to you. And if this happens three times, he will say he's bored of toying with you and disappear, which means you have to go refill the blessed silver pot again, so any sort of safe spotting or attacking from a distance is out. The best strategy here is to pray protect from melee, which should block all of his melee attacks, leaving you only to have to deal with his magic ranged attack. Attack him using ranged, magic, or stab, and since his ranged magic attack always does a fixed amount of damage, you're free to wear whatever armor complements your attack style. Alright, let's gear up and go. Nothing special to remark about my armor here, just wearing some dragon hide for range bonuses, with an adamant crossbow and bolts, as well as a ring of dueling for quick access back to a bank after the fight. For inventory, make sure you have your blessed silver pot of blood. If you have any druid pouches, make sure to grab those. And if you're using Route 2 with the minigame teleport, remember to grab 10 coins. I also would recommend bringing any combat booster potions. I've got range and super defense, as well as prayer potion and energy or stamina, especially if you're taking Route 1 through the swamp. The rest can be food. All right, we're ready to go. I'm gonna go over the three ways to get there, starting with the route through the swamp. Head west out of Canifis and get to the entrance of the swamp. Click on the gate to open it and head south around the pond. At the next branch, go east to find two dead trees. Then go south at the patch of swamp grass or whatever that is. After another patch of swamp grass, go southeast and then continue south. When you see another dead tree, go east again. You should see the boat now, which is good, We're getting close. Head east past the boat, then turn north at the swamp weed.
then head east again and take the northeast path between the lakes. Keep following as it turns east and then take the small path north. Finally, curve back around to the south and we're at the entrance of the graveyard. And you can skip ahead to the fight here, I'm just going to go over the other two routes quickly. Okay, Route 2 using the Shades of Morton mini game teleport. Ignore my lack of armor and inventory here, this is just to show the route since I had to switch to my main account. Make sure you have the 10 coins or you can't take the boat. Go into your mini games menu and select Shades of Morton, then click teleport and wait for the animation. Alright, you should end up in Morton. Run southeast to the transportation arrow on the mini-map. You'll find a boat and click to board the swamp boaty. Agree to pay the gold to board the boat and you'll paddle through the swamp. From here, run east, then north, and then east. Then head east again and take the northeast path between the lakes. Keep following as it turns east and then take the small path north. Finally, curve back around to the south and we're at the entrance of the graveyard. Okay, and you can skip ahead to the fight here, I'm just going to go over the final route quickly. Okay, here's Route 3 using the Underground Passage if you've done In Search of the Myrkey. Ignore my lack of armor and inventory here, this is just to show the route since I had to switch to my main account. Head to the south of the inn and you'll find a small trap door. Click on it to head into the passage. Head south through the room to search the wall. Head south through the passage, and then go through the exit under this overhang here. From here, run south to find a bridge over the river. Cross it and then continue southeast. Here, continue heading south and then go east. Take the northeast path between the lakes. Keep following it as it turns east and then take the small path north. Finally, curve back around to the south and we are at the entrance of the graveyard. In the center of the graveyard, you'll see a coffin. The fight begins when you use your silver pot on the coffin, so before you do that you can drink your potions and turn on your protect from melee. And when you're ready, use the blessed silver pot on the coffin and Deso will appear. And the fight begins. It's actually pretty straightforward, just remember to keep your health up because his magic attack, which is in the form of bats, can lag a little when the damage appears. After you defeat him, your character will say that they can't find the diamond and looks like Malak might have lied. Now we need to head back to Canifis. You can, of course, run back the way we came, but if you bought three salve graveyard teleports, you should still have one left in the bank, so I would recommend just teleporting out of here to a bank and then using that to get back to Canifis. Either way, make your way back to Canifis and to the inn where Malak hangs out. Talk to him and you'll demand the diamond. He hands it over, although it's not really explained how he got it. At this point, you should quickly take the diamond to a bank as soon as possible because there's a random chance that a guy called The Stranger will attack you if you have any of the diamonds in your inventory throughout the quest. I tried to hang around and get some footage of him attacking me, but he just didn't appear for me. Basically, it's a level 95 guy who attacks with a poisoned dragon dagger, but he shouldn't spawn if the diamonds are in the bank. Okay, one of four diamonds retrieved. On to the next, so let's head to the bank and grab some items. This next section also has a couple fights, so here's a quick rundown on what's coming up and how to gear for it. The next Diamond Guardian is on the ice path north of Trollheim. To get to him, we have to kill five ice trolls that are level 120 that attack with crush melee. And throughout the whole area, the cold constantly saps your stats and health. I'm gonna go over taking down the five ice trolls, then banking and gearing up to take down the Diamond Guardian. In theory, you can, of course, do it all in one run, but probably only if you're fairly high stats, so I'm just going to break it into two trips. Alright, so here's what you're going to need. Two pairs of climbing boots. Wearing one of them is recommended, and have the other in your inventory. One iron bar, 
a games necklace with at least two charges, a cake or chocolate cake. Optional, if you can use the Trollheim teleport, bring the two law runes and two fire runes. Note that this requires level 61 magic and completion of Edgar's Ruse quest. Several super stat restore potions. Alternatively, if you're lower on coins and want to save some money, you can't just use regular stat restores and bring prayer potions as well, but if you can't afford them, you will have an easier time. A prayer potion or two since we burn through prayer super fast, even with the additional restore if you're using the super restore potions. A one-click teleport out. Would recommend a dueling ring for a quick teleport to a bank. And the rest is food. Combat boosters aren't as helpful for these battles since your stats are being sapped constantly, so the most important thing is just the stat restore. For gear, I'd say whatever you're most comfortable with and allows you to max your damage. Note that if you do use magic, you should pick a spell that's a few levels lower than your magic level so you can still cast it when the cold zaps your magic level a few times. If you can pray protect from melee, that'll block the troll's attack so you can focus on just boosting your stats. The trolls are weakest to range in magic, but using melee isn't too bad. Once you're ready, use your game's necklace to go to Burthorpe. From there, run east and north along the path to get to the house with an anvil in it. Once there, talk to Dunstan and ask him, can you put some spikes on my climbing boots? He'll try and talk you out of it, but say yes, but I still want them. And then you should get some spiked boots. We'll need these to walk on the ice path coming up. At this point, if you do need to bank anything, reminder that there's a secret bank under the trapdoor in the in here that you can use if you have level 50 agility. But this was when I was trying to do it all in one trip and thought I needed every inventory space possible. And if you can use the Trollheim teleport, you can go ahead and use that now and skip ahead. Everybody else, make sure you've got your climbing and spiked boots and head west out of Burthorp. Follow the path northwest. Once you pass the wounded soldier, and danger sign. Turn on your protect from missiles prayer if you have it, since there are some trolls that will throw rocks at you. And run east past them. Once you go through the gate here, they'll no longer throw rocks at you so you can turn off your prayer. Then click on those rocks to climb past them. Run along the path until there's a fork that heads north. Click on the rock to climb over it and continue east at the junction. Climb down the rocks. Run, run, run. And then climb back up the rocks. And continue through the gate. Run through the arena. It's safe here. And go through the door to the north. At this point, you might want to turn on Protect from Melee, since the trolls are aggressive through here. Otherwise, you can just run past and eat to heal. Head into the tunnel in the north. And when you're ready, head past the trolls and run along the tunnel to the north. Finally made it to the Trollheim Spiral. Head north, and then before the path starts to curve back around to the northwest, turn on your Protect from Missiles prayer to protect from the thrower trolls. Ignore the path heading north here and just keep going. Okay, this path heading north here is the one we want and you can turn off protect from missiles. And if you had the Trollheim teleport, head down the mountain and make your way to this path leading north. And head along the path. It's kind of just long and boring, but also safe. Guess that's the good news. Oh, it's some snowflakes. We're still safe, just keep heading north. You should see a troll child and an ice gate. Talk to the troll child who is crying. The chat box suggests offering him something sweet to calm him down. Troll Parenting 101. Super carefully, right click to use the cake, not eat it. Use the cake on the troll child. 
Now talk to the troll again, and this time he'll talk to you. He's sad because his parents were frozen because a bad man wanted the diamond they had. And that's our ice diamond. So if we help the troll parents, we will get the ice diamond. Agree to the deal. Okay, as soon as you go through the gate, the cold is going to start sapping your stats and health. A trick that you can use is to pause the cold from hurting you if you go into the prayer menu and click on a prayer you can't use, and then as long as you have that message open, the cold won't hurt you. Of course, that doesn't stop aggressive enemies, but after you get past them. And right through here is where we have to kill five trolls to pass. Those aren't the parrot trolls, so it's fine to kill as many as you want. The first time you click on the gate, the troll child will say he froze it shut, but then you can click on it to go through. Okay, so find a troll and start attacking. It doesn't matter which troll, I'm not sure why I was going over here, and you can see it's taken down my stats already. Pay close attention to your prayer since it'll drain a lot faster than it normally does, and drink your super restore when it gets low. And I uh, <laughs> actually died here because I got distracted for a moment and didn't realize my prayer was draining so fast. And that's why my inventory is different now. Anyway, keep a tally of how many trolls you kill, and then once you've killed five, you'll get a message in your chat box that says a chunk of ice falls away from the cave entrance, but it's pretty easy to miss. And at that point, you can crawl through this tunnel. If you want, use the prayer chat box trick to pause here a minute. At this point, I'm going to recommend you teleport back to a bank and prepare for the boss fight. You can keep going if you want to chance it, as the boss fight is pretty similar to the last boss we fought, but I'm going to head back and bank. If you have level 50 agility, you can use your games necklace to teleport to the trap door in the inn and find the bank. Okay, for the next boss, we've got Camel. It's actually a fairly similar fight to Deso, but with the added difficulty of the stat drain due to the cold. He's weakest to magic, but only fire spells from the spellbook work. Also note that if you attack with magic, make sure the spell you're using is at least a couple below your max, since you won't be able to cast it if this cold drops your level too low. Ebon Blast, Trident of the Caesar Swamp, as well as Flames of Zamorak will not affect him. He's got two attacks just like Desso, the melee and then the magic attack that always hits five, either once or twice in a row. So since his melee is stronger, the best strategy is to pray protect from melee, attack with fire spells, range, stab or crush, and wear armor to boost your attack. I personally hate using magic for combat, so I went with ranging gear for this one, which I'm sure isn't a surprise to anyone. For inventory, I'd say bring several super restore, and do not forget these or you'll have to come back for them. Your climbing boots and spiked boots, games necklace or Trollheim teleport runes if you can use the spell, prayer potions, maybe a one-click teleport out, stamina or energy potion for the run back, and the rest is food. And now we have to go through the whole trip back out there, so here we go. <laughs> Round two. Can use the Trollheim teleport, you can go ahead and use that now and skip ahead. Everybody else, make sure you've got your climbing and spiked boots and head west out of Birthorp. Follow the path northwest. Once you pass the wounded soldier, and danger sign. Turn on your protect from missiles prayer if you have it, since there are some trolls that will throw rocks at you. And run east past them. Once you go through the gate here, they'll no longer throw rocks at you so you can turn off your prayer. Then click on those rocks to climb past them. Run along the path until there's a fork that heads north. Click on the rock to climb over it and continue east at the junction. Climb down the rocks. Run, run, run. And then climb back up the rocks. And continue through the gate. Run through the arena. It's safe here. And go through the door to the north. At this point, you might want to turn on Protect from Melee, since the trolls are aggressive through here. Otherwise, you can just run past and eat to heal. Head into the tunnel in the north. And when you're ready, head past the trolls and run along the tunnel to the north. Finally made it to the Trollheim Spiral. Head north, 
And then before the path starts to curve back around to the northwest, turn on your Protect from Missiles pair to protect from the thrower trolls. Ignore the path heading north here and just keep going. Okay, this path heading north here is the one we want and you can turn off Protect from Missiles. And if you had the Trollheim teleport, head down the mountain and make your way to this path leading north. Head along the path, almost there. Snowflake time. And we're back at the ice gate. Turn on protect from melee and then run past the trolls through the tunnel. And we're finally back. Remember, if you need to pause, you can use the prayer message trick. At this point, just follow the path along. Before it turns south, turn on protect from melee and there's a pack of wolves that will attack. And just keep following the path. Okay, once the path turns west and you see a rock, get ready to fight Candle. Make sure your prayer and health are good and your protect from melee is on, and then move past the rock. The fight isn't too complicated, just keep an eye on your health, stats, and prayer. Be aware that his ice barrage style attack can kind of be delayed when it registers the damage. And it took me just over four minutes to defeat him, but you can see I still had a fair amount of food and potions left. Once you kill him, it's heal up and press on, since we've got to find the troll parents now. If you're low on supplies, he drops some cake and stat restore, which should hopefully get you the rest of the way. If you're out of food and low on health, you might want to teleport back to a bank and come back this way, but you will not have to defeat Camel again. To get to the end of the path from here, expect to take 70 to 80 points of environmental damage. The two cakes will heal 30, but if you're out of food, that's not going to be enough. Save your stat restore from now since we've got a ways to go before we need regular stats and just focus on keeping your health up. Walk west and take the path to the north. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a rock near the start. Keep following rocks and you'll come to a clearing. Head north and then east. Along an even harder to see path. It's kind of bordered by the whitish ice clump, so you can try and follow those in a general north direction. And then it'll start curving back around west again. And sorry for the spaz out here, just had a bit of lag. And south. Okay, you should come to an ice ledge. If you click it, you'll get a message saying you should put on your spike boots. So put on your spiked boots and you'll be able to click the ledge to continue. And of course, it's slippery and you can fall and take damage. So this part is super slow and obnoxious, but just keep following the path onward. The good news is there isn't anything to attack you, so you can just focus on getting down this darn path. I'm not sure if it was just luck or what, but it does seem to get easier as you get closer to the top. And at times like these, it really makes you wonder about this quest being called Desert Treasure after we spent so long in the snow and ice. Finally, you'll see an ice gate at the top of the mountain. Click it and a path will appear. Keep going. 
And here are our troll parents that need rescuing. If you right click on the ice block, you'll see a smash ice option. This is where it's helpful to use some of your super restore if you have any left. <laughs> ah, how did I fall down? I was just standing still. Anyway, it'll be faster if you use the stat restore. And just keep trying until eventually you defeat the ice block. And then repeat on the second ice block. A conversation will play with the troll parents and eventually will reveal that the troll child had the diamond all along. And then you'll all go visit Troll Child, some more family reunion conversation, and you'll get the Ice Diamond. And quickly get it to a bank before the stranger attacks. As a side note, you can use a trick to restore your stats without using up potions if you use a Ring of Dueling to go to the Ferox Enclave and hop through the Free For All portal and back. Ta-da! All fixed up now. Alright, two down, two to go. I actually think the last two are a bit more straightforward. It's just running through dungeons with a boss at the end, if that's any solace. Okay, for the smoke diamond, we need to head to the dungeon near Polnivnic, run through it, and fight the boss. Since we don't really need to bank at any point, I'm just gonna go over the boss fight now. So if you remember the whole thing about ice gloves, this is the guy we need them for. He's weakest to magic, but only water spells from the main spell would work. And if you attack him using any weapon, he'll unequip it if you get within melee distance, if you aren't wearing your ice gloves. Beyond that, he has a strong melee attack, so protect from melee is going to be the best way to go once again. If you aren't using magic, he's also weak to range, so that's a viable option. If you try and use melee, you'll see some pretty strong defense against all melee styles, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. And then if you're praying protect from melee, you should wear magic protection armor to mitigate his magic attack, so dragon hide works well for that. With all that in mind, here is everything you'll need for this section. First of all, if you've still got some lowered stats from the previous section, make sure your fire making is back to at least level 50. Aside from that, you will need 205 coins, a tinder box, a stamina potion or super energy. Stamina potion is actually pretty important for this one since we have a time limit to run through the dungeon, so get one if you can. Two prayer potions, combat boost potions, I've got some ranging here, single filled water skin since we briefly have to run through the desert, a bunch of food, and a teleport back to a bank like an Amulet of Glory, Dueling Ring, etc. For gear, you must have a face mask, gas mask, or Slayer helmet, or you'll take damage while in the dungeon. Ice gloves are runes for water spells, and the rest of your gear can be matching your attack strategy. You can see I'm opting for ranging and getting the magic protection of Dragon Hide. Once you're ready, make your way to Shantae's Pass to the south of Al Karid, using the Amulet of Glory teleport or Dueling Ring teleport to the Al Karid Duel Radiant and running south. Once there, buy a pass from Shantae, we've done this before. And then go through the pass and right click on the rug merchant to travel. Select Paul Nivnic and wait for the rug to deliver you. And then run south all the way through Paul Nivnic. and a little bit southwest. And then west past the purple and yellow tent. And then to the north, you should see an exclamation marked on the minimap. The first time you click it, you'll get a warning about a lot of smoke at the bottom of the well. Cool, hopefully you've got your face mask or whatnot, so that's not a problem. Click it again and you'll climb down. Now just hang out here for a moment since the dungeon's fairly safe, as the only aggressive enemies are the fire giants. The trick to this dungeon is we have to light four torches, each located in a corner of the dungeon. Then run back to the center and grab a key. You have five minutes from the time you light the first torch to light all the others and then get back to the center chamber. So very doable, but you still gotta be fairly quick about it. And that's why we got the stamina potion. So when you're ready, walk south. You can save your run energy and stamina potion until we're just about to light the torch. And you'll see all the way in the southwestern corner this weird torch. So take a drink of stamina and then light the torch and start running. 
make your way north. Probably a good idea to click on the mini-map so you don't accidentally attack any monsters. And then head west once it's as far north as you can go. And you should find another torch which you can use your tinderbox on to light it. Next, follow the path east. Ignore the path south until you're as far east as you can go. and then follow the path along to the south. When it joins up with another tunnel, keep heading south. And then it'll bend around to the north again and keep following. And then watch out for the fire giant and take the path south. Keep following the path and you'll find the southeastern torch. Use your tinderbox on it to light it. Run back the way you came and head north. Ignore the other path for now and just go all the way north. There's an aggressive fire giant here, but he shouldn't follow you all the way to the end of the tunnel. And here's our final torch. Light it and then run back the way you came. And if your stamina potion is out, take another dose of that as well, since we still have to make it back to the center chamber to get the key. Near the lava pit and other fire giant, take the southwestern path and follow it around. At the fork, take the western option and follow it north, and then around back to the west. Ignore this first path south, but take the second one. Follow it south, and then go through the eastern opening to find a chamber with a chest in the middle. And if you've done everything correctly, you will open the chest and get a warm key. After you have the key, you can let all the torches burn out since we're not on a time limit anymore. And once you have the key, you can head out of the chamber and go north, and head east again. Ignore the path south until the main tunnel starts to curve south. And continue heading south the fork and follow it as it curves back around. Okay, here's the pool of lava, and through that gate, our boss fight. When you're ready, drink any stat boosters, turn on your prayer, and go through the gate. And he'll appear and start attacking. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. With my protect from melee prayer, he isn't doing too much damage. Looks like he hits me once for 12, and that's it. Once you defeat him, the smoke diamond will appear in your inventory, so hurry and get back to a bank before the stranger attacks. Okay, final diamond. For this section, we have a couple steps before taking down the boss, so here's what you need for the first part. A skills necklace, necklace of passage or games necklace, charged amulet of glory or dueling ring, a couple of energy potions just to make the running parts go faster, some sort of anti-poison or antidote, couple pieces of food, I'd say I actually should bring 4 or 5 to be on the safe side, 30 to 40 lockpicks, fit as many as you can in your inventory, and then note the rest, 500 coins, and just wear whatever, we're not fighting anything just at this point. Use your skills necklace teleport to teleport to the fishing guild, or your necklace of passage to teleport to the outpost, or games necklace to teleport to the barbarian outpost. From there, make your way to this area on the map. Once there, find this guy named Rosolo and talk to him. Ask about the diamonds of Azanadra. He says he knows something about the Shadow Diamond, guarded by Damis, who is invisible. And that's gonna make him difficult to defeat, but Rosolo says he has a special ring that'll give to us if we can recover his gilded cross that was stolen. And turns out the guy who stole it is all the way out in al -Karid. So that's our next stop. Tell him yes, and let's head to al -Karid, either with your Amulet of Glory teleport or your Ring of Dueling. Make your way to the Shantae Pass. This seems familiar. At this point, if you haven't used up one of your energy potions, you'll need to put something in the bank to make space for the Shantae Pass. 
then buy a pass from Shantae, and then go through the pass. And then go to the rug merchant and right click him to travel. Select Beatabin Camp, and away we go once more. Once in the Beatabin Camp, run directly south through the desert to get back to the Bandit Camp we visited at the start of the quest. Head to the tent to the south of the camp, and in the chest is the stolen cross. We've just got to get it open, and that's why we brought all these lock picks. So let's start picking the lock. There are three locks, theoretically, to get through. It will give you a message in the chat box which one you make it to. When you fail, you get damaged a bit, and also there's a chance you get poisoned, so either have a drink of your anti-poison as a preventative measure, or just keep an eye out to see if you get poisoned. It took me 20 attempts to open the chest, and it may take you more or less according to how lucky you are. If you use up all of your unnoted lockpicks, you can then run to the northern tent with the pull booth and general store and talk to Tiles. He'll exchange your banknotes for five coins each. So use your noted lockpicks on him, and you can choose how many you want to exchange. And back to the chest. And on my 20th attempt, I managed to get the cross. Once you've got the cross, make your way back to the bank to gear up for a fourth and final boss fight. So Damis, he's got two forms, the second appearing immediately after you kill the first. The first form is pretty easy, he's only got 90 HP, and if you pray protect from melee, you won't get a scratch on you. It is in a multi-combat area, but all the other monsters also attack with melee, so no issues there. The tricky part comes with his second form, where he takes off his shirt and is now way stronger. The second form will drain your prayer pretty quickly if you're in, within melee distance of him, so that makes protect from melee difficult. So there's some alternate strategies here. The good news is that he only attacks with melee, so there are some opportunities for kiting or safe spotting. One tactic, the one that I'm going to use, is using a magic or range attack and luring him to an area where you can use random dungeon monsters to make a barrier between the two of you, effectively creating a safe spot. Another is attacking with magic or ranged attack and using the snare or entangle spell to keep him far enough away to prevent him from attacking you. Similarly, you could just bring a stamina potion and kite him around so he can't land a hit on you. And if you want to use melee, you can use the barrier method I mentioned before, but poison or venom him and then wait for the poison or venom damage to take him down. If you're using poison, it gradually wears off so you have to go back out and attack him periodically, but it would reduce the amount of time that you have to be casting Protect from Melee and him draining your prayer. And of course you can just try to take him down like a regular fight, but I'm not sure how much luck you'd have with that, but it is an option. As a side note, the wiki lists this area as a safe spot, but I personally was having trouble using it since he kept disappearing. Maybe I shouldn't have gone all the way to the end of the spiral. Probably would have been better if I just fought him from right here, but just wanted to warn about that. For me, he kept disappearing if I got too far away. So for your inventory, you should have a skills necklace, necklace of passage, or a games necklace to get back to Rosolo, the cross that you got from the chest, stamina potion since we've got to run through a dungeon, prayer potions, combat booster potions, I've got ranged and super defense, a teleport out, Probably would be smart to have a one-click teleport for emergencies, and a ton of food. For gear, weapons and armor to fit the combat strategy you decided on. Note that Rosolo is going to give us a special ring that we have to wear to defeat Damis, so don't plan on being able to use a ring of recoil or ring of life or any other ring. Once you're ready, make your way back to Rosolo. Once there, talk to him. He'll take the cross and in exchange give you a ring of visibility that will allow you to access the shadow dungeon. So put on the ring and then head to the picnic area just to the east. There should be a ladder and an entrance there now. And just a warning that as soon as you head down the ladder, there are aggressive enemies, so watch the next section before heading in. To make it to Damis, we've got to get through this tunnel while be attacked by enemies. The skeletons are level 80 and the shadow hounds are level 63. If you're wearing mage gear or something with not much defense, you probably want to protect from melee when you pass by enemies. And I'd recommend using some stamina potion if you brought some to run past all the enemies. 
I've marked some safe-ish areas on the map, but still be alert because there might be a skeleton that wandered in. It's just safer compared to the rest of the areas. And you can see we start by heading east. And then this section of the tunnel should be safe. And then turn north once the end of the tunnel is coming up. Keep going all the way north, ignoring all of the paths leading to the west. And this area of the tunnel should also be a safe-ish area if you need to stop. Otherwise, follow it as it turns east and then immediately head south. And keep going all the way south. Don't take any of the eastern paths until you can't go any farther south. And then keep following the path as it turns east. Take the fork north and then east to the big chamber. In the big chamber is where Damis will appear and start attacking you. You'll remember his first form is pretty simple, just pray protect from melee and attack. It looks like he's hitting me multiple times, but it's actually because there's a bunch of skeleton guards hidden on the same spot due to the multi-combat area. Now for the second form, if you're using the approach to try and make a barrier using the monsters, you can run down the tunnel the way you came, make sure he's following you, and you aren't too far ahead or he might disappear, and lure him down here, where you can try and get the giant rat between him and you. And it's a little easier because there are two sections of tunnel here, and after what is not my greatest battle performance, and actually kind of embarrassed I have to show this footage, Okay, here we go, got it. You're home free once you get this set up. The rat can't move and Damis can't reach you and you're free to take your time. And if you have a poisoned weapon and want to use the poison approach, the same method can be used. Just get him poisoned and run around and use the monsters to create a barrier. And once you defeat him, you can grab the shadow diamond and quickly make your way back to a bank to avoid the stranger attacking. If you didn't bring a one-click teleport, you may have to run a bit to find an area where the monsters stop attacking you. Final step, guys. So, in the final step, it's a maze where you have to run to the end while level 110 and 124 enemies attack you, so stamina potions or energy potions and protect from melee are going to help here. You will need, first of all, your four diamonds. Remember, once you've got these in your inventory, the stranger might appear and attack. Alternatively, if you stand around with them in your inventory for about 15 minutes and he doesn't appear, it's likely he won't ever appear. You will also need 205 coins, a filled water skin, teleports out like Amulet of Glory or Dueling Ring, Stamina Potion, and Energy or Super Energy Potions, I have some of both, Prayer Potion, I'd say bring at least three, Anti-Poison of some kind, Food, and one free spot for your Shantae Pass. For gear, you don't need to fight anyone at this point, so wear any weight reducing gear you have to help with all the running. And it's back into the desert, so head to Shantae's Pass using your Dueling Ring or Amulet of Glory. Buy a pass from Shantae and head into the desert. Right click to travel with the carpet merchant and go to the Beatabin camp. Okay, carpet ride. And once you've landed, run south to the bandit camp. From there, run southeast to the hill with the mirror area from the beginning of the quest. Talk to Iblis, and he'll say that you can free Azanadra from his prison in the pyramid to the south with the diamonds, and in return, Azanadra will give us the ancient magic spellbook. Although, not in those exact words. So head south again to the big pyramid in the middle of the desert. Once there, head to the northeast corner and find the pillar. Select your smoke diamond and use it on the pillar. Well, I guess technically it's an obelisk and it should light up. Next run south to the southeast obelisk and use the ice diamond on it. And head west, 
find the next obelisk and use your shadow diamond on it. And finally, run north to the final obelisk. And use your blood diamond on the obelisk. Okay, now we're able to enter the pyramid. Head up the steps and click on the very secure gate here. I really don't get how this is keeping anyone out, but whatever. Okay, and before you go in, hang out and watch cause we gotta go fast once in the pyramid. Although you can still get hit by the desert heat here, so maybe you even wanna log out and just watch this next part. So in the pyramid, there are four levels and each gets larger and more maze-y as you proceed. The annoying part is there aren't any set traps that you have to dismantle, they're just random. And every time you get kicked out, of course you have to run back around to the front and start from the beginning. The two things that help most is never stop running, as standing still will pretty much guarantee to get you kicked out, and keep clicking on the mini map to update your location, since not updating it every couple seconds also seemed to get me kicked out. The other things to look out for are enemies, so make sure you have protect from melee on and auto retaliate off. Either just keep your protect from melee on the whole time, or you can turn it off and on as you run past enemies. The scarab swarms can poison you, so I'd just recommend taking a dose of anti-poison before going in, because sometimes you'll be frozen in place and then they'll appear. The other thing is that it's really helpful to have a map pulled up next to your screen if you can. You can use this one I put together here, otherwise you can just google desert treasure pyramid map. That should get you something. Okay, now I'll go through the footage of the four levels, but once again, it might be more helpful to just use a map after you get a sense of what it's like. So take a dose of stamina potion and anti-poison and head in. The first level is pretty simple since there aren't that many options on how to get through the maze, so you basically just follow the tunnel around. Second level, you head east as far as you can. Then south and follow the path from there. And I got stopped here from the scarab swarm to appear and from here it's just a run to the end. third level, where things start to get a little complicated. At the intersection, take the western route, and then south for a bit, but go east when you get the chance. Keep following the path around until you get to the very southeastern corner and follow it west again. That will bring you to the ladder to the final level. Okay, fourth and final level. Head west and then head north all the way to the wall. then west all the way to the wall, and then north to follow the path around with no intersections or forks for a bit. Once you're along the northernmost corridor, you're almost there, just keep heading east. all the way to the northeast corner and follow the path as it winds back west again. And don't click into the big chamber of the mini map, it does weird things to the pathfinding, just click along the east-west corridor. And click on the doorway to get through and you should be safe at this point. Sigh of relief. Now you can talk to this ghostly Azanadra. 
He's a bit out of the loop since he's been trapped in a pyramid for a couple thousand years, but he's grateful to you for returning the diamonds, so he agrees to give you the knowledge of the ancient magic spellbook. And quest done! And now you can see your spellbook is updated, but if you want to switch it back, you can just click on the altar over here to toggle the main spellbook. And if you ever want to return to switch spellbooks, you can just use the tunnel at the south of the pyramid. You don't have to go through the four levels again. And with that... Hey everybody! Some people mentioned that they wanted to see in-person outros again. So here I am. Uh, just wanted to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Plus, show off my um, Konar hair. Because <laughs> no one in real life will know what that is. But you will, hopefully. If not... She's a really cool Slayer Master. Uh, twins. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you want. But, you know, either way, I'll see you next time.